All right, so finally we have the new B760 boards available. If you want to build more of a budget gaming system with a 13th generation Intel CPU. So for today, we're gonna to take a look at the ASUS ROG Strix B760F paired up with the i7-13700K. Now you would most likely pair it up with a non-K CPU instead because you can't overclock, but you do get a little boost in a clock speed with the K version. Also, if you would rather want to go for the Z690 or even Z790 range, if you want to overclock, and get a bit more features out, you can go check out my review where I did a, do a review on both the Z690E and a Z790E. And as a bonus, I did also do a review on the more budget Z790A Prime board. So you do have a couple of options there, but of course, we're gonna take a look at the B760 F boards for today. Now I wasn't able to find a stock of the B760F, but compared to the other models, it should be around $270, I believe. While the Z790F is going for $420. So you are paying a bit more there. Now for years of Africa, the F is actually available for 6,000 Rand. For the i7, however, the 13700K, it is retailing for around 400 $30 or 9,300 Rand. So I wouldn't say that the F is cheap, uh, but for some people it might be, for some people not, but it is more of a higher mid range board that where you do have a lot more options compared to, of course, the cheaper, cheaper boards. But I think it's gonna be a perfect fit for somebody who wants to go for the 13700 or the 13900 non-K, because you still get all of the bells and whistles without needing to pay the higher Z790 prices. Now as for the design, it does still keep the same black styling from the majority of the ROG boards, but also still the aggressive look with a plenty of heat spreaders for your M.2s and also your chipset. But I do like that I just added a little something to the board as well with these like uh, eight a bit graphics on uh, the heat spreaders that around the CPU as well um, and then down here somewhere as well like uh, jets fighting and shooting in uh, the 8-bit the style games the older games so it actually looks pretty cool it's just something a bit different uh, you might not necessarily even see it but taking a closer look it's just a nice little addition that they added now just before we continue are you actually planning to upgrade to any of the 700 series and 13th generation intel cpus whether it's a z790 or b760 or are you sticking with your current setup or planning to move somewhere else let me know down in the comments below now the new b760 platform does feature the same lga 1700 socket for both 12th generation and 13th generation Intel CPUs. The 13700K that I'm using does have 16 cores, 24 threads, which is 8 performance cores and 8 efficient cores, as well as 54 megs of a cache. The performance cores have a base clock of 3.4 GHz and a boost of 5.4 GHz, while the efficient cores has a 2.5 GHz base and 4.2 GHz boost. Now, unlike AMD's B series boards, these B760 boards unfortunately cannot overclock. There was apparently a board going around from a different brand that had an external uh, clock generator that allowed you to actually overclock the CPU, but you did need to know what you were actually doing to actually achieve that. And I'm not even sure if that board is currently out with that chip, which is a bit unfortunate because with ASUS's AI overclocking tool on the Z790 boards, uh, it overclocks the CPU on its own, just a slight bit, like 200 megahertz or something. And I mean, uh, that's a 400 megahertz increase over the non-K CPU. So it's a nice little bump in performance there, but unfortunately we don't have that option here, but at least you still get a nice 200 megahertz bump with the K versus the non-K i7. But now if you do want more gains, again, you'd rather go for the Z790 or Z690 routes. As for the VRMs, it is a 16 plus one phase 60 amp setup, which is a slightly downgraded compared to the 16 plus one 90 amp setup that you get on the Z790E board. But it's still a solid upgrade compared to the previous B560F's 
eight plus a two phase setup. But again, you can't overclock, so it might even be a bit overkill, I believe. So it's definitely going to be plenty enough if you want to go for the i7, or most likely, I would say, for the i9. And even if uh, the Vera is could have been a problem. I think the biggest factor is going to be actually cooling the CPUs because uh, these uh, new 13th generation uh, CPUs run quite, quite hot. So especially that i9, I'm having such a difficult time actually cooling mine. Now moving on to memory, the B760F now supports a maximum of 128 gigs on its four dual channel DDR5 DIMM slot with a rated speed up to 7,800 megatrons per second. It is the same as the Z790F, but an upgrade compared to the DDR4 5000 megatransfers per second on the B560F, you know, the previous generation. If you still want to stick to DDR4, the B560F is an option, of course, or otherwise you would need to go for the A or the G range of a B760 Strix boards. Or you can just go for some of the other tough or prime boards. Luckily, there's so many different options that you can get, uh, different prices as well. So yeah, you do have those. Now with these new boards, you also get a SUSE's Enhanced Memory Profile 2, the new one, which can actually overclock non-XMP budget RAM and even overclock mix kits in a quad dim arrangement, which actually sounds pretty handy. Now I haven't tested it myself yet, but for a budget board with budget RAM, it's actually a pretty nice feature. But however, I didn't need to because actually Kingston sent over their Fury Renegade DDR5 32 gig kit with speeds up to 6800 mega transfers per second CL36. So. I was set, I didn't need to worry at all. And of course I did benchmark it with the RAM as well. Now if you want to see uh, more motherboard or CPU videos, GPU videos as well, definitely subscribe to the channel because I do have a couple of more to come, both on this channel and then also on the second channel linked in the description below. Now dropping a bit down, we do have four PCI Express slots with the top slot being a PCI Express Gen 5 X16, while the other three are a Gen 3, a 4, X or 1X for the shorties down there. <laughs> the top slot does a feature I see this armor designed for better durability as well as having the Q release a button to quickly remove your GPU which I just love it just might be it's so much easier to actually get your GPU out from your system especially these freaking massive RTX 4000 series cards. Now as for storage you do get a 3 Gen 5 four M.2s each under the heat spreaders here. There's unfortunately no Gen 5 for the upcoming crazy 12 gigabytes per second SSDs, but you do still have that on the Z790 E board. They do have that option, but I don't necessarily think that's too big of a problem because those SSDs will cost like two or two, three, even four times the price of just this board on its own. So. It's fine, it's fine, I'll deal with that. <laughs> also, all three does a feature as soon as Q latch, you quickly release a lock, which just makes installing m 2s so much easier as well. And then uh, lastly, you do get a four 90 degrees SATA 3 port here on the side. Now on a side note, it doesn't seem like any of the M.2's SATAs or Pizza Express slots shares a bandwidth, so you don't have to worry about that. Now as for our I.O., you do get a fair amount here with the integrated I.O. cover, where you also have an HDMI 2.1 port, DisplayPort version 1.4, six USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 X to 20 gigabits per second Type C, Board, your 2.5 gigabit Ethernet connection, your clear CMOS and BIOS flashback, your Wi Fi 6E, and also your audio connections with the Supreme FX ALC 4080 Kodak. All right, so next up for your onboard connections, you do have your 8 plus 4 pin CPU power, your QLED, a single USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C header, two USB 2 headers, your, your Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 header down there as well. Uh, additional, you have a three a five volt addressable RGB headers and a single 12 volt header, your thermal center, and then finally you have seven PWM fan headers. All right, so that was 
Quite a mouthful there. All right, now finally getting into the CPU benchmarks, the i7-13700K, just like the i9-13900K, is a very, very fast, easily beating out the i9-12900, and it's also a good chuck ahead of the previous i7-12700K, which was already a pretty beast of a CPU, and I do still have mine in my personal setup. I did pair the 13700K with the currently most hated GPU at the moment, the RTX 4070 Ti. Uh, if you want to see a review on that, I will leave a link in the description. Please don't kill me <laughs> uh, because a lot of people didn't like what I said, where I did say it's a good performing GPU. Not necessarily for the price point, but it's a good performing GPU. At least if you do have $800 to spend, uh, which is more than a 3080 watt launch. So. But this isn't a GPU review, it's about the F and a bit about the CPU as well. Now as for cooling, I did pair it up with the Waterforce X240, which is a 240mm AIO, and it did have a hard time actually cooling the 13700K, especially in some of the more CPU intensive benchmarks. My ambient temps was relatively low currently for here in the summer at 21 degrees, but even with the fan set to a max at 3200 RPM, it's still hit the high 90s and even 100 degrees. Because of that, it did slightly thermal throttle down to an average of 5.1 GHz on the performance scores and 3.9 GHz on the efficient cores. In our games, it was a better, averaging around 60 to the mid 70 degrees depending on the game. As you like in my other reviews, it does look like you would need something like a 360 millimeter to actually keep these uh, CPUs in check, or you need extremely low ambient temperature, which unfortunately currently here in South African summer, we don't have the luxury of having that. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to read the VRM attempts as HW Info didn't label it. So uh, I think it's going to be the temp two, which looks to have peaked at 55 degrees with an average of 50 degrees. But again, I'm not 100% sure if that is actually the case, but I believe it could be if ASUS did add a temperature sensor for the VRM. Now, moving on to power draw, the 13700K has a base a TDP of 120 watts and a boost of, of 253 watts which from my testing looks to be pretty much spot on again not being overclocked on a stock it averaged 14 watts on idle and around 240 watts in a games and had a peak of 282 watts in a Cinebench stress test so do make sure that your power supply does have enough juice to actually power the CPU but if you go for the non-k versions those ones that do only have a 65 watt TDP so it's not going to be as power hungry as necessary, the K versions, even the i5 13600K is a 120 watt uh, CPU. So yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, so that's pretty much it for my look at the ASUS RG Streaks B760F board. A uh, pretty decent board, I will say. It is, of course, again, a bit more up to in price range compared to some of the other uh, B series of boards, but you do have uh, plenty of options. Uh, you do also have the option of going for the cheaper uh, tough boards or the prime boards as well, so you do have uh, that. But so far, the board delivers everything that you would really need. A decent set of I.O. I would have liked to bit more USBs, but it's not the biggest issue. And you do have a decent VRM temps, uh, if the temperature was correct again, uh, 55 degrees at peak. And also you do have a good enough storage options with your three M.2s, again, all of them being a Gen 4, not a Gen 5, but again, that, that's fine. I don't mind that for more of a budget a board. Now, like I mentioned before, I would rather pair the board up with something like uh, the i9-13900 non-K. I think that's gonna be a better fit, but sometimes you can get actually the K version or the KF versions for actually a pretty good uh, price. And you do have a slight, again, a boost in uh, clock speeds. So you do get a bit more performance out there, but it's all just going to depend up to the price point you can, you can actually get the, the parts at. So you do have uh, plenty of options. Again, you don't necessarily just have to go for the F board. You can go for the E version as well, which is a bit higher end compared to this one, but everything is just a small incremental upgrade. So just going to pen up to price point again. That's, that's all it really is. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. A big shout out to ASUS of Africa sending the board over for our review. If you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. If you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys. All right, so now I have about, what, two hours to actually edit the video and get some more B-roll. And then I'm without power for like, 
four and a half hours. So that's very nice. And then I have power for like three and a half hours. And then again, without power for four and a half hours. Ah, what a nice little day it's going to be. Thank you, Escom.